Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today, we're joined by Erin Bush, who has a combined 12 years experience in leadership and operations and in operations for the last eight, and has been running operations at a few companies that I know people listening will know, uh, previously Sales Loft, and right now Pendo. So Erin, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, so you mentioned just before we went live about you actually having a background in sales and then transitioning over. Can you talk a little bit about why you did that? Yeah, I, I started out as an SDR uh, and then moved into SDR management. And at that point was responsible for a lot of the reporting and quota development and commissions and, and operations stuff as a manager. Uh, but after that, I, I became an AE and then saw just how broken uh, the sales process was, where it was the early days of marketing automation. We had tons of leads. We had no structure to prioritizing them or dispositioning them or automating follow-up. And there was just a, a lot that I wanted to fix, not just for myself, but for the rest of my team. And I thought uh, doing that from an operations role would be the best way to do it. Got it. And which business were you when you kind of did that transition from FDR to manager to AE? So I was an SDR and SDR manager at um, an outsourced sales development company called Entrust Marketing Solutions. I don't think anybody's heard of it. It's not around anymore. Um, and then I was an AE at Alfresco. They're, they're definitely it. still around. They're an open source content management software. Got it. Cool. And then from there, you moved into, you moved into sales ops and the rest is history. The rest is history. Yes, I got to to start at a couple of companies that you didn't mention, but then move into being the first ops hire at Salesloft and really learning the end to end process uh, and working with that company as they scaled. I mean, that must have been an amazing experience. How, how many people did they have when you joined as the first ops person? Well, there were maybe ninety people total at that cool. time. And uh, what what was the scale when you when you left? I think closer to 300. Cool. It was, it was growing really fast, um, mm -hmm. you know, for the, the few years that I was there. Yeah, I can imagine. And then, so fast forward to today then, and we, you're kind of running the revenue operation or revenue operations at Pendo. Um, how, what's the size of the sales team and what's the size of the operations team? So the sales team is about 90 people, um, and that's specifically sales, not including sales development and customer success. The revenue team is closer to, I think, 150, 175. It's definitely getting up there. Um, the operations team is under 10. Uh, we are scrappy and uh, in need of, of growing. I'm fairly new to, to Pendo. I just started at uh, the end of 2020, so right now we're putting in place all of our plans for what we need to do this year to set up for scale, how we need to grow as a team. So there's there's a lot to come. Got it. And when you say the revenue the revenue team is 150, is that success, marketing, and salespeople? No, I wasn't including marketing in that. I was including okay, success yeah. and sales, yeah. Makes sense. And then nine to ten in the ops. And that ops team, does that span just success and sales? Historically, it's just been sales. Um, cool. You know, when I came in in December, there was a sales operations team um, and an enablement team of one, uh, and so we're we're looking to really redefine actually revenue operations is what we're calling it to say that our internal customers are sales development, sales, and customer success. They're the primary revenue teams that we work with. And in order to do that, we'll need to grow the team. Um, and then enablement as well. I'm grouping under revenue operations. Got it. Um, well, yeah, I know we actually, I believe we use Pendo EBSA. And so, and we're seeing some good results. So I'm sure there's growth to come this year. Um, question about the current text that sales related tech stack you're using mm -hmm. yeah i can i can just run you made to run down the list so we have a 
what I think is pretty traditional SaaS tech stack where we have, you know, inbounds coming from marketing automation. We have lean data for routing matching. Um, we use outreach for sales engagement, Zoom info for data enrichment. Everything is based around Salesforce. Um, those are the main you know, key players in our sales tech stack. Got it. And you mentioned marketing automation, which tool? Marketo. Marketo, cool. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I want to talk more about these, the 90 sales reps. Um, do you, from your experience, like extensive experience working with salespeople, do you have any tips on productivity or, or maybe something you've done previously that has significantly affected productivity of reps? Um, that's a good question. So my goal is always to make things very, very simple um, and, and, and very clear. So one of the things that was actually launched before I got here, but that we're um, continuing to roll out and reinforce is our sales methodology so that we are very clear on, you know, throughout our entire customer journey, where someone is who from the Pendo team is involved, what they're doing, um, and and just simplifying all of those stages so that sales is not spinning their wheels trying to, you know, research or connect with customer success when it's not the right time, but they know exactly what they need to do at any given point in time. Uh, And then giving them the right metrics and the right reports so that they know if they're doing all of the right things to push their deals forward and to be successful. So it's, it's really definitions and then metrics and making them crystal clear. Got it. So having a very clear methodology and then clearly showing metrics for different stages so they can manage and understand what's going on. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, Sales by gut is, uh, you know, the way things really used to be, but there's so much more that we can see now from uh, what the salesperson has done and also what the customer has done to say, you know, this is what's likely to happen. These are your deals that are likely to close. This is where you might want to spend your time and give them guidance. Um, so to be a resource to help them to be successful, that's, that's really our goal. Got it. And then also about, Let's say you do have to tweak the method methodology or start tracking a new metric, which is going to change what the rep is doing and maybe make them do a little bit more work. Um, how would you go about kind of explaining to the rep that this is what we need to do in order to improve everything? So we're, we're actually in that process right now. So throughout the fall, we worked with the sales leaders to define the actions and the people involved at each stage. So, you know, to start with, it was rather than just defining and explaining, it was getting people involved to help us understand the way things are done now and what's working and and what's not so that we can come up with the right definitions. Uh, But then rolling it out to the team's The first thing that I think is always really important is to get the leadership uh, involved and bought in up front so that if there are sales leaders, because, you know, the team's pretty big now. So not every sales director was involved in the developing of the plan. A lot were, but some weren't. So getting all of the leadership up to speed and bought in and then involving them in the rollout to their team so that they're you know, maybe one big training like we actually did at Sales Kickoff a few weeks ago, but that there's follow on that they are um, the way that they're digging into deals and the way that they're coaching follows along with the methodology long term. Got it. And then I also want to ask about data quality. Is it your team's responsibility to maintain this and make sure everything's up to date? I think data quality is a, a really broad term. So it's it's difficult to just say yes or no. Uh, the way that I would break it down would be into two categories. There's source data and then there's our data, right? So source data is stuff like Zoom Info, Discover Org, Clearbit. What are we pulling where we say we've learned that companies of this size 
this industry, this location, or people with this job title um, or this behavior are the right people that we want to connect with, we can certainly own that source data and make sure that that goes into the right places in the CRM. Our data is a little bit more complicated and, and that's where we have to work in partnership with both sales and with customer success to say, we want to know usage metrics, defining clearly what those are, how we connect Salesforce into the platform, uh, how we, you know, report those up to the teams. There's, there's a lot more complexity there. And that's actually something that we're, um, we're actively updating at the moment. So it's the first thing I thought of, but then also, you know, what a customer's, spending with us when they renew, all of those things, that requires things to be put into the system manually and, and correctly. So I think we're we're the, the owners of the system, and then we have to work with the, the people that feed that data in. Got it. Makes sense. And then I also want to talk about maybe referring back to the time at Salesloft with onboarding, because I assume mm-hmm. you had to onboard a a load of reps during that experience. So do you have any tips for effective onboarding? That's a, that's a good question for SalesLoft specifically because SalesLoft, um, when I was there, we went through a, a whole evolution where prior to actually having an enablement function, the onboarding work was really done by our sales VP. And so he was very hands-on, but it ended up taking all of his time. So our task as an operations and enablement team was to pull everything out of his head to understand and document his process so that we could then schedule things out for uh, what could be built into a system, you know, things that the reps would need to read or watch or listen to, and then what needs to be done in person, actual hands-on training, practice, uh, validation of knowledge. Uh, and then once we documented it, we were able to have other people present that content so that it wasn't all dependent on one person. So it really was this evolution from one person who figured it out and did it really well to how we build that system to scale. Got it. Yeah. And that totally makes sense because he probably had a really, he like, he knew exactly what to do and when, but no one else knew. And so it was never going to scale past however many new people per week or per month. Right. So that totally makes sense. Um, And then currently with Pendo, so sales forecasting, are you guys involved in that process? We are. We're heavily involved. Have you been in my meetings? You're talking about everything we're doing right now. <laughs> what what should we talk about for sales forecasting? Um, I'd like to understand the the process from like no data to the final data, which is being reviewed with head of sales or CEO. Okay, so we are. Um, let me talk a little bit more broadly. So we're really looking at let's say two big two big meetings. I'll just group them into meetings. We have the capacity and pipeline meeting and then the actual sales forecast meeting. So the capacity and pipeline meeting is have we hired the right people, enough people into each role so that our selling capacity is is meeting our goals? And then are we building enough pipeline so that we we'll be able to close enough deals to hit our goals. And that is really focused on both what marketing is sourcing and what sales development is sourcing. And so we looked at, as as we talked about earlier, the definitions, as we looked at the definitions of our funnel, uh, you know, from the bottom up, if we have revenue goals, how much pipeline do we need? How many deals is that? What do we expect from marketing versus sales development? Having, Having clear steps along the way. So the pipeline and capacity really working with the sales development and marketing and then forecasting, that's really where it's bottom of the funnel. It's the sales leaders talking about what they have in the later stages of opportunities and what they expect to close. So it all comes back to how we've defined the steps in the buyer journey and who's responsible for what at each stage. Got it. And you guys are running those meetings and collecting the data and presenting it. 
The sales leaders are presenting their forecast. Um, it is revenue operations who's actually facilitating the meeting. Got it. And so the, the sales forecast is being presented to leadership. Correct. And then leadership would feed back on different deals and maybe help out if possible. Yes, exactly. Okay, got it. Sales leadership sent. Okay, awesome. And then next question on metrics. So if you could only choose one sales related metric to measure for the rest of your career, which would you choose? Oh God. Um, I would say opportunities moved into the pipeline is probably the number one. And, and, and I mean that really specifically moved into the pipeline where you may have engagement from a prospect at an event on your website, then they talk to sales development and they agree to meet with sales and then sales meets with them, validates their need, accepts the opportunity and moves it into pipeline. So they've gone through several steps before that actually happens. And at that point, we know that they have a need and we can work with them and figure out how to close it. I think that getting down to later stages and revenue is it's too late to know what's actually happening. Got it. And so this is when an A you would accept a lead who's come through either marketing or through the FDR team. Mm-hmm. And, so, and that's when the opportunity is created in Salesforce. It's actually after the opportunity is created. We have SDR create the opportunity and then um, the AE progresses it. Got it. So it's almost like acceptance of the opportunity by the AE. Yeah, I, I think Got that was, if I had to pick one, I would pick that one. Yeah, cool. Makes sense. Hey, process. Awesome. And then final question is, who throughout your career has influenced or educated you the most? So um, having worked in smaller startups, I actually had never worked for a sales ops or revenue ops leader um, until until now at Pendo. So I, I primarily worked for a, a CRO or CEO or COO who was, you know, where I was having to learn what was needed by the business and figure it out on the operations side and then learn from my peers in operations roles at other companies. So there's a lot of knowledge transfer and, and a lot of people that I've learned from. But um, for that reason, because there was not a lot of sales ops leadership, I learned mostly from sales leaders. So the, the one person, if I had to pick, would be Derek Grant at SalesLoft. He was really good at saying, here's a business problem. Here's what I think we should measure to figure out where we're executing and where we're not. And then please help me figure out how to do it. And so I would... Um, you know, have the mission to go into the system, dig into the data, figure out what was happening. But he he would bring me these questions and these challenges, and and it was always, um, you know, it would always make me think and, and figure things out. And I learned a ton through that process. Got it. Well, shout out to Derek. Yeah, um, Aaron. So thank you so much. By the way, here are the things I picked out. Here are the things that I noted down on my sheet. Um, your, the way you split, you know, no one else, you've had about 75 guests, I think. No one else has split data quality in, in between those two areas and then like had different plans or approached those two, like the shared versus ours in different ways. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, the, the, giving the sales reps clarity in terms of the way they sell, but also the metrics, I think is like, like <laughs> I think a lot of sales off people could benefit by doing that. Um, and then the final one was, yeah, this it's a very simple metric. Like some people come on the show and then we'll give a metric that's like super hard to calculate and it's like super advanced. But then this is literally just how many accepted opportunities are coming into the pipeline, which I think is a very clear way of understanding the health of the sales organization, right? So yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. <laughs>